guys, thank you so much for joining me on today's video. As you can see on my back, I've got all my kit and um, I'm heading out for my first wild camp of the year. Really excited for this, more than ready for it. It feels like it's been way too long. Um, it's quite a hike to get to the spot where I camp at and it's a glorious sunny day today. So I'm just taking it steady and really making the most of this beautiful walk. Didn't have the best start to uh, the wild camp, but I'll let you know about that in a little bit. But um, yeah, I'm out now, got my kit on and I'm gonna start heading down to find where I'm gonna pitch up for the night. So I'll check in for you guys in a little bit. This spot where I'm heading tonight, I did used to have a little base camp here that I documented on my older YouTube channel for any of you guys who've come over from there. I know I've got a lot of new subscribers on this channel, so you might not have seen that. But yeah, we had a little base camp we'd set up. We used to come here quite regularly camping. And then we moved, so we lived nowhere near it. And then we did come back after quite a few months and it had been destroyed, whether by weather or other people visiting, I'm not sure. But it is a beautiful spot. It's got some water around it. And it's just, it's just a beautiful little location where I used to come to escape to. So I thought, what better place to come for my first wild camp of the year, especially on a day like today. Ooh, it's a bit hard getting down here. Um, yeah, then this, this spot here. So I'm really excited to show you guys it who haven't already seen it. And I'm really looking forward to spending the night here. It's so great to be back in this location which holds so many memories for me. This is my favourite place to come camping. It's the first place I took my daughter while camping when she was only three. And yeah, I've just made so many beautiful memories here. Just behind me there, um, if you walk a little bit further down, is where we're going to set up camp. It's where we usually come. Um, but it's a little bit too early yet to get the tents up, so we're going to wait a while. But yeah, it's great to be back and I'm really looking forward to spending the night here and sharing this stunning location with you guys as well. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, um, this trip didn't get off to the best of starts. We woke up this morning, we knew where we were heading, really excited, loaded the car up, parked in a public car park um, where you're allowed to park and yeah, we're going about our day like we always do, always park in that spot. And some guy got out of his car and asked us why we were parked where we were parking and we explained, well, we're parked in a public car park, you're parked in the same car park, we're allowed to park here. Um, then he said, well, I hope you've got leads for your dogs. I said, oh, absolutely. We won't be walking them without leads on. Um, that's not a problem. Anywhere they need to have a lead, they will be on a lead. So yeah, that's all fine. Anyway, he got really aggressive, um, shouting at us, saying he didn't believe that we were just out for a hike of our dogs. He believed that we were here to fish. Um, we were going to hike to the nearest fishing pond and illegally fish. So he took the number plate off my car and said he was ringing the police to run it through the uh, police system. And that would prove that I was an illegal fisher. So I showed him my kit, I said, look, um, I've got nothing in here that I could fish with. I've got no fishing rods, nothing to fish with. And he got in his car shouting that he was gonna call the police and that he wouldn't stand for illegal fishers. Now, I just wondered if any of you guys have experienced anything like this. Have you ever been heading out and being accused of, um, you know, people seeing with your kit on and thinking you're doing something that you, you, you're generally not doing? Because it really unnerved me. I just thought, in what world are we living in now that, um, you get confronted for going on a hike with your dogs. I'm all for people getting outside and enjoying nature and the outdoors. I mean, everyone's mental health really needs it after being cooped up inside in lockdown for the past year. This is what people should be doing. You know, we never leave in mess. We never leave any trace. We always clean up after ourselves. We're really respectful of nature. And yeah, anyway. I did put a bit of a dampener on the trip, but I thought I'd share that with you guys. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced anything similar, but 
it wasn't a nice start to the trip. But I'm in a beautiful location. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day and not give it another thought. I've got my dogs out of me today. This is Tallulah for anyone who remembers her from my previous channel or follows me on Instagram. This is Tallulah's first trip out that she's had since having major surgery. She got some pretty nasty uh, scars on her belly. She had some little cancerous lumps removed. But the vets assured us that now all that's been removed, she should be fighting fit. And she's absolutely ecstatic, aren't you, to be out on your first trip. She's been missing coming out of us. And this is Lily's first time out at this particular location. And she's absolutely loving it because Two of her favourite things are the woods and the water, so this is perfect for her. But yeah, it's just great to have Tallulah back out of us and fighting fit again. It really was a scary time and it's uh, great to be spending the night in the woods tonight with uh, both my girls. So I thought I'd come for a little bit of an explore. Um, where we usually camp is at the other side of this beautiful lake here in that woodlands there. So I thought I'd come and explore the other side of it because I've never come this way around before. And I stumbled across this little nature hide here. So if you go in here, this is fab. You can sit and observe the pond and all the nature on it. So I'll take you guys inside so you can see. It's just in there. It's gonna get a little bit dark, I hope you can still see me. So inside here, you can see in the little coves of the woodwork, some old birds' nests. And then if you just sit here, you can observe that beautiful lake there. And people have carved the names in it. Like it goes right back to like, this is 2009. Children's names who have obviously been here on school trips or whatever. What a great little find. This is why I love exploring. You can feel like you know somewhere really well. I spent like a whole summer last year at that camp spot and explored all that side of it. And just by chance taking a different route, I found this little place, which would be a really great place to come, sit down and observe what wildlife calls that pond their home. So we've got the tent up now. I've got the door opening to face onto that river there so I can just sit and chill out and have my tea and look at that beautiful view. Um, this tent that we're out in tonight is the Van Gogh Pulsar 200. This is an excellent tent. It's a bigger tent because we're out with obviously two adults sleeping in this, two dogs, one of them being Lily, who's ginormous, and both our kits. So, so we have enough room, we brought the bigger tent. Usually if I'm doing a solo camp or it's just the two of us out without the dogs and without so much kit Then we just come out in the Banshee, but yeah, we're out in the Pulsar tonight This is what I'm sleeping on. This is my airbed This honestly makes every one of my trips so enjoyable because it's like sleeping on a radiator It keeps me so warm. I'm such a cold sleeper even in the summer like I have to be nice and warm through the night when I first started going camping years and years ago, I didn't realise how important it was having a decent sleep system. And I'd had some really cold nights and it really does ruin your experience of being out. So yeah, this is worth every penny I spent on it. And the sleeping bag I brought tonight is the Rabacent 900. I think because even though it's been a warm day, the temperature will drop in the night. We aren't quite into summertime yet where July and August where it is red hot even through the night and maybe we'll bring a lighter bag but for tonight that's what I'm sleeping with. So it's heading up to about five o'clock now so it won't be long before I start thinking about getting some tea on. Um, this afternoon was beautiful, we had highs of 20 degrees, so it was really nice to be out in this kind of weather. But as the evening's drawing in, it's getting a little bit nippy and I can definitely feel the temperature dropping. Could really do with a really nice piping hot cup of coffee and in error, 
when I was unpacking my day bag because I went out yesterday just for the day and putting things into my overnight camp bag completely forgot to move the coffee over I can't believe I've done that I can't go without coffee so tomorrow morning is definitely going to be a bit of a test for me <laughs> all I keep thinking now while I'm not reading my book is I could just have a nice hot coffee but hey I can't complain I'm in a beautiful location I've had a gorgeous afternoon so what more could you ask for sun's just starting to set behind the trees now so that's going to be the end of a beautiful day